Okay. Breaking news. Channel 16 WBOC. Starts up 7 o'clock. We now take you to the violence in Baltimore. Not the protest. The violence. Now I tried for days not to say anything. Because I know how these things go. Politics and racial issues are never really good to discuss because they always bring out the worst in people, myself included. I go from zero to 100 really quickly, so I try not to say anything at all. I try to just remove myself from it and not read the comments and not watch the videos and not watch the news telecast, but social media has made that nearly impossible. So here now my two cents. First and foremost, I will say this. I'm not a racist. I was not raised that way. That is not how I do things. Even if I were raised that way, probably still wouldn't be a racist because I think it's dumb. But I was raised right, so I'm not a racist. Secondly, I'm not a police hater. I don't hate the police. I think when you have good police officers who do their jobs, that are sworn to serve and protect, and that's what they go out there every day and do, and they put their lives on the line and the lives of their fellow police officers every day to protect and serve, I applaud them. With those two things having been said, I will say that I have been black in America for 35 years, so I am not naive. And that pretty much covers both of the first two statements. Now, first I would like to say rest in peace to Freddie Gray. Because his murder is what has popped things off in the city. Notice I said murder and not wrongful death or not manslaughter or accident. He was murdered. We all know it. Whether we know what happened or not. Because we don't know what happened in the precinct with the six officers that are in question. Common sense is we knew Freddie Gray was murdered. So let's not sugarcoat it and pussyfoot around that. We already know that. Freddie Gray was murdered in police custody. Something else that we know because it's public record is that Freddie Gray has a rap sheet about as long as Route 50. So now that he is dead, People are saying, well, he's a criminal. So, you read his rap sheet, and, and then you make the choice. Reading his rap sheet proves one thing. Freddie Gray was a criminal. Has anyone denied that? I, I haven't heard any news coverage. I haven't heard his family come out and say anything. Nobody has denied that... Freddie Gray was a doughboy. He was caught with cocaine in his possession. No one has denied these things. However, that thing that no one has denied has nothing to do with him being murdered. Because in this country, we have a constitution, and we have laws, and we have rights. And our laws say, if you break the law, you are arrested. You are taken to jail where you have a right to a trial. And whatever that trial decision ends up being at the end is where we go from here. Now this is cut and dry case. Freddie Gray was selling drugs. Freddie Gray got caught with drugs. Freddie Gray went to jail. The next step is that Freddie Gray should have remained in prison until trial or until a hearing or going before the commissioner or something. What should not have happened is that Freddie Gray was murdered after being arrested. That should not have happened. And it has. And because it has, Baltimore City right now is in a state of chaos. Because people are tired of being victims. They are tired of being oppressed. They are tired 
of being wronged and having their God-given and constitutional rights trampled on. And I have said and will continue to say and, and repeatedly say that an oppressor cannot treat the oppressed like animals and then be surprised when they act like animals. You have created that monster and now you have to deal with it. That is the reality of what is going on right now. Now I will say this, rioting, violence, looting, tearing up your own stuff is the absolute dumbest shit anybody could do. First of all, not that I am an advocate for rioting or looting, but if you are mad with someone who lives on 2nd Street. Because someone who lives on 2nd Street did something wrong to you. And you want to go and break some of their stuff and knock some heads. Go to 2nd Street. Don't tear up stuff on 1st Street where you live where your grandmother lives, where your mother lives, where you have to live after this is over. That is ludicrous. Makes absolutely no sense. Why tear up your own? I'm not advocating tearing up anything. I'm just saying common sense on your grown man and your grown woman is you go to the problem. You don't go around it. You don't sideways through it. You go directly to the problem and you deal with it, you get it done, and then you go away and you leave it there. You deal with it and it's over. It's kind of like Christianity and the Lord. They say take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Same thing. I know some people are going to be like, I know she didn't go there. Yes, I did. Same thing. You go to the source because, see, once you go to the source, then you have faith that it's going to be handled. And you go on back and you don't worry about it anymore. So, if somebody on 2nd Street does something to you, let's say the police are on 2nd Street, and Freddie Gray and the protesters and the rioters and the looters live on 1st Street. The protesters have peacefully gone over to 2nd Street to make their point known. Meanwhile, the rioters are on 1st Street, tearing up their own stuff, burning down their own stuff, stuff they're going to need next week. Who does not shop at Mondama? But you're over there tearing stuff up. Your grandmother got to get her pills at CVS, but you didn't set it on fire. Dumb. Let's use our heads. You should have went with the peaceful protesters on over to 2nd Street and dealt with things the right way. Tearing up stuff, even if you went on 2nd Street and started burning up stuff over there, is not really going to make that big of a difference because you're doing what is expected of you. We live in a stereotypical world where the worst is always expected of you. No matter whether you've earned that or not, the worst is what is expected of you as the oppressed by the oppressor. So, nobody's surprised that Baltimore is on fire right now, that it's so hot in the city. People is praying they get home safe, praying that their relatives are safe. Nobody's surprised by that. Because the oppressor has trained us, really, to react that way. And that's what they expected, and you gave them exactly what they want. And then you have people on the outside, like myself, looking into the situation and we shaking our heads and we're voicing our opinions and we're not there in the heart of the city we're not in the heat of the situation we don't know what's going on and I'll be the first to say that this is my opinion and my opinion only and we all know that opinions are like assholes everybody's got them but in this age of technology and social media I can share mine so listen to it or don't it's out there for you my point is that 
I understand that it's not always going to be peaceful because situations are going to arise and things keep happening. And this isn't new. This isn't new. You know, Trayvon Martin isn't a new situation. Mike Brown is not a new situation. Freddie Gray is not a new situation. This has been happening in our community and to our people for as long as we've been here. So this is not new. This is just a new generation dealing with an old problem. And totally honest, the only thing that is going to change this old problem in this new generation is education, tolerance, and love. Those are the only three things that are over gonna, gonna overcome this hate. Because that's really what it is. It's hatred and frustration. And those two things are a volcano, get them together, they're going to erupt. So, that's what's going on right now in Baltimore City. The volcano done erupted. People are tired. People are tired of being oppressed. People are tired of their living situations. And you have to look at it as, okay, there are kids out there today on Gwens Falls Parkway. We used to live on Gwens Falls Parkway. There are kids out there that are high school kids, young kids, tearing up the city, throwing rocks and bricks at the police. You can't be mad at all police officers, whether they be white or black, doesn't matter. Because all the police officers in Baltimore City are not in question when it comes to the death of Freddie Gray. There are six officers that are in question. Those are the six officers that are questions, not our frustrations, and not bricks and rocks and half a sidewalks need to be aimed at. Secondly, where the hell are these parents? These high school kids out here tearing the streets up. Where are their parents? Because you still have to live in that neighborhood. You still have to go to school in that neighborhood. Everything that you need to buy is in that neighborhood. You got to catch the bus there. You got to catch the train up Mondawmin. Why are you tearing up your own shit? Stop it. Makes no sense. Go to the source and do it the right way. Show them that you are educated and that you can talk just as well as they can. And that you can think just as well as they can. And that you can organize and come together just as well as they can. Because not all those police officers on force of Baltimore City like each other. They're probably not even all friends. But they're all out there today in their riot gear against you. Because they have come together. That is always the problem in the black community. We do not come together. So you have ministers out there. And you have citizens out there. And they are peacefully marching and protesting. They are marching and protesting for justice. And y'all out there tearing up the city and making them look bad. Looks like they're doing it for nothing. Because this is the response that they get from the people that should be walking with them. You're taking all of the focus from the positive thing that they were doing. Because now the world is looking at Baltimore City. And the caption on the news is the violence in Baltimore. Not the protest for justice. Not the peaceful marches. Not the common sense. The violence in Baltimore. That's how the news came on. I was just watching it. That's exactly how what they said. Now it's the white lady sitting next to the black man. I don't know their names. I don't watch the news that much. But they came on and that's what she said. The violence in Baltimore. We now turn to the violence in Baltimore. Why do you want to be known for that? And when I say you, I mean those who are rioting in Baltimore City for the wrong reasons. You, you're not really even worried about Brother Freddie Gray. You just want to tear stuff up and get some free shit. That's not helping us at all. That's not helping our movement. That's not helping our cause. And be the first ones on social media tomorrow. Hashtag the struggle is real. The struggle is real and you're not helping. Because the struggle is to go out there and march. And be peaceful. And preach love. In the face of hate. That is the struggle. That is what is real. Going out, clowning, acting a fool, tearing up stuff, setting stuff on fire, and stealing shit is just criminal and dumb. And I know that people are upset. And you want to knock heads. Because 
That's what you want to do when you get upset. And I fall right into that category, which is why all week I've tried not to say anything. Because people say something on Facebook and then I read it. Or they post uh, racial memes on Instagram. Or they're saying, putting videos up on Twitter. Or, you know, they Snapchat and ignorant stuff to their friends. Whatever. Because, see, this has turned people into, you know, that person you act at home when you're around other people who think like you. That type of situation. And so, emotions are high. And, in all honesty, everybody has a right to be upset. But you can't be mad at all the police officers for the acts of some police officers. Now, in Ferguson... Some of the stuff I've read and seen, if hey, everybody made with the whole police force there, maybe it's like six of them who are right, and the rest of them is gone left beyond. But in Baltimore City, not all of those police were responsible for the murder of Brother Freddie Gray. Just like in Ferguson, you know, not all of those police were responsible for Mike Brown. You have to look at the situation as a whole. You're going after a whole group and you're generalizing. And you don't want to be generalized and you don't want to be statistically put into a category with people that you don't belong. So if you're out and, and you're not breaking the law and you're not a criminal, but you get mad every time you get pulled over for driving while black and have a, and rightfully so, why would you categorize the police in that same manner? Not all police are evil. Not all police are good. Not all blacks and Latinos and low-income white families are criminals. Not all rich white people are white-collar criminals. You cannot generalize. There is no generalization that would apply to everyone in a group. It's not possible. So let's start taking people as individuals. Let's deal with individuals. Let's hold the individuals who are responsible for the death of Brother Freddie Gray accountable and not tear up the city not tear up our own. It makes no sense. And that's just pretty much all I have to say. That's my opinion. I'm against racism, I'm against ignorance, and I'm against anything that don't make sense. So, there you have it. T's Corner. That's my opinion on the situation in Baltimore. My prayers go out to the family of Brother Freddie Gray, to the entire city of Baltimore, and my pleas go out to those of you who are not acting in a civil manner to please, please, please act in a civil manner because uh, our um, newly elected Republican governor, Larry Hogan, whom of course I did not vote for, has signed an executive order for state of emergency, which means that if you want to continue to be out there throwing rocks, the National Guard is going to be out there standing next to the Baltimore City Police and the Baltimore County Police and all the police that they've called from surrounding areas. And while they're going to have their riot gear and they're going to have their shields, they're also going to have guns. And I don't know what the procedure is for a riot situation because I've never been involved in one. However, I do know that when I was in the National Guard, and now i got my Ricky Lake Oprah going on, when I was in the National Guard, I was trained one shot, one kill, ain't no whole bunch of nonsense, ain't no whole bunch of messing around. So we do not want the National Guard and the police forces to come out there and start shooting these kids. So somebody please talk some sense into them. If your kid was out there rioting today and you saw him on the news while you were at work, please sit them down and talk to them. If you seen some kids out there who ain't got no parents, who ain't got nobody at home, but you know them, and you got good sense, call them, send them a message. They all got phones. Somebody talk to them. Keep these kids safe because in a state of emergency, they can kill these kids. They can kill these people out here looting and rioting, and then we'll be burying more than Freddie Gray. So let's keep that in mind. Let's not do anything that's going to harm ourselves. Because, like I said, the struggle is real. And nonsense and ignorance does not help the struggle. We do not get further like that. We do not progress from the situation that we're in 